Everybody Cooks Rice by Nora Dooley. Illustrations by Peter J. Thornton. Disclaimer, not every literal person cooks rice, but many people all over the world do. I do. It's yummy. I mix it with beans most of the time. The artist would like to extend, extend special thanks to his international cast of models, to my families, immediate and extended, and with thanks to J.E.D. Nora Dooley. For Barbara. Peter J. Thornton. My stomach is grumbling. Mom was cooking dinner. And I couldn't wait to sit down and eat. Carrie, will you go out and find Anthony? Dinner is almost ready. Mom is always asking me to look for Anthony. He's my little brother, and he's such a moocher. If he's not playing ball or hopscotch, he's at a neighbor's house tasting their dinner. I walked outside and looked up and down the street. I couldn't see Anthony anywhere, so I went over to Mrs. Darlington's house. Anthony and I call her Mrs. D. She's our next door neighbor. Mr. and Mrs. D are from Barbados. It was Thursday, so their grandchildren, Sean and Stephanie, were over having their favorite dinner, black-eyed peas and rice. At the front door, I could smell fried onions and bacon. It made my mouth water. I ate a small cup of rice and black-eyed peas while Mr. D told stories about Barbados. People swim there and go fishing, even in December. Suddenly I remembered I was supposed to be looking for Anthony, so I asked if anyone had seen him. Sean said he'd seen Anthony going into the Diaz's house. I went there next. When I walked into the kitchen, my friend Fendra Diaz and her little brother, Tito, were cooking dinner because their mom was working late. Tito was telling Fendra that she uses too much spice. Fendra said Tito was checking the pot too often, so the rice and pigeon peas would never cook. Their teenage brother, Jose, told them to pipe down. He wanted to watch TV. I looked in the pot to see what was cooking. The rice was bright yellow. Fendra told me that her grandmother in Puerto Rico had taught her how to cook with turmeric. Turmeric makes rice yellow. Tito gave me a taste from the cooking spoon. Boy, was it delicious. Then I asked if anyone had seen Anthony. Fendra said Anthony had been there to taste their dinner, but had left to visit Dong. So I went across the street to Dong's house. Dong Tran came from Vietnam five years ago with his whole family. Aunts uncles, cousins, and all. Dong's older sister, Tam, answered the door. Mr. and Mrs. Tran worked late every day, so everyone else takes turns making dinner. It was Tam's turn to cook. She was biggie making the garlicky, fishy sauce called Nuak Cham. She let me try it on some rice. It was sweet and salty and sour. It tasted interesting. Later, when Mrs. Tran got gets home, she'll make fried rice with peas. When Mr. Tran gets home, everyone will sit down and eat together. When I asked if anyone had seen my brother, Dong said Anthony had been helping Mrs. Hua and Mei Li with their groceries. The Huas live on the corner, so I started walking up the street. Carrie, wait up, someone called. It was my friend Rajit. He was carrying three round metal boxes all clipped together. Something inside smelled delicious, so I asked what it was. Rajit said his parents were working at their video and gift shop, so he was bringing them leftovers in, the, in a tiffin carrier. There was a big 
party at Krishnamurti's house last weekend, so Rajit's mother cooked a fancy, colorful Indian dish called biryani. It's made with peas, cashews, raisins, lots of spices, and a special kind of rice called basmati rice. I had tasted biryani at Rajit's house the last time I went out looking for Anthony. When I told Rajit that I was looking for my brother again, he said Anthony and May Lee were blowing bubbles out a window of the Hue's house. The Hua's came from China a year ago. Mrs. Hua is just learning how to speak English. We smile at each other a lot. Mrs. Hua was steaming white rice for her family and the boarder who lives in the back room. She was also making tofu and vegetables in the wok. That's a big pan with a round bottom. <laughs> Mrs. Hua always makes me sit down and eat something when I come over. You see the wok? Everyone at the Hua's house uses chopsticks. Mei Li, who is only three and a half years old, can even pick up a single grain of rice with her chopsticks. Mei Li laughed at me when I tried using chopsticks and dropped some vegetables. She said Anthony was bye-bye, so I decided to try our backyard neighbors, the Blurs. The Blurs are from Haiti. Their cat just had kittens, so Anthony wandered, wanders over there a lot. Mrs. Blue teaches English at the community center. We get to call her Madame Bleu. Madame Bleu speaks three languages, French, English, and Creole. When I walked in, Madame Lou Bleu was making a Creole-style Haitian dinner. It had hot peppers, chives, red beans, and, you guessed it, rice. Monsieur Bleu works two jobs, so he won't get home till late. Madame Blue says the pot will stay on the stove and the rice will get tastier and spicier. Adeline and Jean-Marie Blue came home for dinner on their break from their after-school jobs at the grocery store. They helped themselves to bowls of rice and beans from the pot and gave some to me. I thought my mouth was on fire. Jean-Marie teased me when I gulped some water. It was getting late, and I still hadn't found Anthony. Adeline said she had seen him with a kitten in his arms, climbing the fence to our yard. I said thanks and au revoir. That means goodbye. And hurried home. When I walked into the house, Anthony was showing the kitten to our baby sister, Anna. He was explaining to mom that he was only borrowing the kitten. Mom was putting dinner on the table. Her grandmother from Northern Italy thought, taught our grandmother, who taught mom how to cook risi e bisi, risi e bisi, risi e bisi, rice with green peas. Mom puts butter, grated cheese, and some nutmeg on it. It smelled so good, but my mouth, uh, my stomach wasn't grumbling anymore. I told mom that I was too full to eat. Anthony said he wanted to eat his dinner, even though he was full, because he loves rice. And that afternoon, he found out that everybody cooks rice. Ooh, and it gives all the recipes. Recipes for just rice by itself which is a great side dish. You can put all kinds of yummy things on it. It's also got a recipe for Mrs. D's black-eyed peas and rice. A recipe for the Diaz's turmeric rice with pigeon peas. And Tom's nuak cham. Mrs. Tran's fried rice. Rajit's biryani. Mrs. Hua's tofu with vegetables. Madame Blue's rice and beans, and great-grandmother's risi e bisi. 
<laughs> so you can buy the book and make those recipes for yourself. But that was Everybody Cooks Rice by Nora Dooley and Peter J. Thornton. And this is EDU Kids Space. Subscribe for more stories, books, and lessons. Hit the bell button when I, uh, so you're notified when I put out new videos. And my name is Ian. You can support the authors of this book by buying the um, book via the link that should be in the video description. And you can support this channel by clicking the Patreon link in the video description. I don't make any money from the channel. YouTube just puts ads on for their own profit. Um, so I just started this during the pandemic and hope that it will be useful to people. Okay, thanks. Enjoy. Oh, I'm really hungry. I'm gonna go find some rice.